Welcome to Calvary Church Online. We are so glad that you've joined us today for a time of worship and spending time in God's Word. And if you're joining us for the first time, we're so glad that you're here. Click the Welcome tab. Let us know who you are. We want to send you a small gift to say thank you for joining us today. We want to thank our entire Calvary family for your continued consistent giving. Because of you, our ministry in our church, in our community, and around the world remains strong. For anyone who wants to give today, follow the information at the bottom of your screen. Please enjoy the service. Good morning, everyone. Will you stand up with us, please? All right, let's worship. Here we go. Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. Give praise to the Lord. Beside Him there's no other. Thanks to the Lord, His love endures forever. Give praise to the Lord, beside Him there's no other. This is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. He brought us from mourning to dancing, from glory to glory. This is the day the Lord has made. So what are we waiting for? Come on and praise the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord It's freedom for the captives Good news to the poor And beauty for the ashes So what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? Well, this is the day the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice and be glad in it. He brought us from morning to dancing, from glory to glory. This is the day the Lord has made. So what are we waiting for? Come on and praise the Lord. So what are we waiting for? Oh, come on and praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. I live, I live to tell what the Lord has done. I live to sing of my Savior's love. I live because He is risen. Tell what the Lord has done. I live to sing of my Savior's love. I live because He is risen. Now this is the day the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. He brought us from morning to dancing, from glory to glory. From morning to dancing, from glory to glory. From morning. From glory to glory This is the day the Lord has made So what are we waiting for? Come on and praise the Lord So what are we waiting for? Come on and praise the Lord Oh, praise the Lord 
that song is it actually reminds me of one of my favorite psalms which is psalm 42 which says you know why so downcast oh my soul why so disturbed within me put your hope in god and it later says uh, my soul is disturbed within me and yet i will praise him and yet i will remember and so i just want to encourage us this morning as we get together that no matter how we're feeling let's do that let's say yet i will praise him Yet I will remember all the good things that God has done for me. So let's do that together. Let's remember now. Thank you, God.
My name is Rachel, and I'm a director here at Calvary. On Sunday, May 28th, our annual Calvary Church Vision offering will be taking place. This is a one-time sacrificial gift, above and beyond our regular tithes and offerings, that will enable us to continue to effectively serve our community and improve our facilities. With the completion of our parking lot project last year, we've already managed to pay for 40% of the total project costs through your ongoing generosity. So now, let's do our next part and believe for the miracle means to pay off the balance owing. We're encouraging our entire church family to prayerfully consider participating in this intentional moment of giving. And we give knowing none of us can accomplish individually what all of us can do together. As always, giving online is safe and convenient through Calvary Connect or directly at calvary.ca slash give. If you prefer to give in person, you are welcome to do so here on Sunday mornings or during the week at the church office. Thank you for your contributions to the vision of Calvary. Hey, this is Vince. I'm so glad you're able to join us in church this morning. Uh, if there's something going on in life that you would like to have someone pray with you for, make sure you hit that live prayer button. Someone on my team or myself will make sure we engage with you and, and pray for whatever's going on in your life. Now, let's head into today's message with Pastor Steve. Show him some love in the chat. Hello, everybody. If you're here today for the first time, my name is Steve. I'm the lead pastor here at uh, Calvary. And we're so glad that you've joined us today online or here on site or even on our podcast. Welcome to episode one of a new two-week mini-series that we're calling We Are Calvary that leads up to our, our annual vision offering uh, coming up next Sunday, which is very exciting. This is a one-time best gift that we're encouraging our entire church family to prayerfully consider being a part of. And we're really believing God for a miracle day of giving on the 28th. It's going to be a fantastic day. Everyone from our, our students, our singles, and our families, through to our staff, our board, and our business leaders, all prayerfully participating in this significant moment every year in our church. All of them giving, knowing that none of us can accomplish individually what we can do together. Now, participating in this annual offering is, is more than just giving towards a project. This offering enables us to take a giant leap forward in fulfilling the vision that God has placed before us. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. So I'd like to encourage you all to, to pray, to prepare, and to participate in this church-wide miracle offering as we trust God for immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. Now, as many of you know, last year we were able to tackle our parking lot project, and it's complete now. It looks fantastic if you've been here, because after 27 years, we realized last year that our lot had finally come to the end of its life, and it was time for a, a complete renovation. And so in total, the project costs were $535,000, but in less than a year, listen, in less than a year, uh, because of your generosity in last year's vision offering and your regular giving uh, and, and our focused uh, monthly payments, we were able to pay 40% of the overall project cost. I think that's something worthy of celebration. And we could not have done that without each of you. 
And so let's generously give in next week's vision offering and believe God for the miracle means to, to pay off the remaining $317,000 within the next year to two years. Let's believe that, it, that, that God will completely take care of it through each of us. And this is yet another kind of practical way that we can continue to effectively serve our, our families, our singles, our seniors, our, our kids, our young adults, and, and our students. And so, so let's, let's be believing together. And so before we jump into the, to the message today, let's take a moment and pray together. Let's believe God for this uh, miracle day of giving. Father, we thank you that within each one of us is the seeds of, of the great things that you've called us to do. We pray uh, for next week's vision offering that you would use each of us to sacrificially give above and beyond what we normally give to see this taken care of. We pray that, that Lord Jesus, you would uh, speak to each one and that we would celebrate together when we see uh, this project completely paid off. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Now, vision, vision matters. Vision is something that stirs our faith as it helps us to focus on what's truly important. It's what keeps us moving forward, providing meaning to the day-to-day -day challenges that, that we face within our lives. Jonathan Swift once said, vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. So what do you see? What do you see for your, for your life? for your children, for your family, for your marriage? What do you see for our church family? You know, Walt Disney was a man who they called a visioneer and someone who could see what was invisible to other people. Now, years ago, even before I was going into ministry, I was on a track working towards uh, working with Disney Studios. I was working with a, a, a talent scout uh, in Florida, and I was back and forth to the parks, and that was looking like where I was headed. It was all things Disney at the time. But over the years, I think as I began to, to seek the Lord and listen to his call on my life, he had other plans, which I'm so glad I listened to because I'm here today because of them. But over the course of my kind of pursuit of that career track, I heard many stories about Walt Disney. You know, that he imagined this place the theme parks that we now see all around the world where families could come together and play together, where instead of just uh, moms and dads watching the kids, it was everybody enjoying themselves together. And so one of my favorite stories that I heard about Walt Disney was uh, uh, when they were preparing for, for the park, uh, one of the workers saw Walt standing out in the middle of a field kind of looking into nothing. And so he approached him slowly and he, he said, what do you see, sir? What are you, what are you seeing out there? What are you looking at? And he said, I'm riding the rides that we're about to build. And some of those rides he would actually never get to experience personally himself. And when Walt Disney World, which was uh, much bigger, about five times bigger than Disneyland, first opened in Orlando, someone approached his brother Roy and said to him, you know, what a shame it was that, that Walt never got to see Disney World before he passed away. And Roy's response was, he saw it first, that's why you're seeing it now. So here we are, you and I, living in a day we've never lived, sitting in a service that we've never sat in, and looking at a future differently than we've ever looked at it before. It's a very exciting day to, to be alive, seeing what God sees. But everything we're believing for, Jesus saw first. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Fixing our eyes, keeping our focus on Jesus, the pioneer or the, the visioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him so he could see it because of the vision he had for you, the Bible says that he endured the cross. You see, vision in our lives always produces endurance. It's the ability to, to push past obstacles, to push past difficulty, because you can see what other people can't. And when you can see what God sees for your life, it will get you up in the morning. It gives, it gives you inner strength to work hard and to, to hustle, to live in the reality of what you see that he has for you. 
seeing his picture of what could be. That's why it's important to have vision in your life, in your marriage, for your children, for your relationships, for your, your business. Through, through all of its teachings, the Bible paints a healthy picture of what could be in your life, bigger than what you could ever accomplish on your own. Now, I don't know about you, but there's still things in my life, there's still things in our church that I feel called to do that I haven't done yet. There's still things to accomplish in his name, things that could be when we put our life and our plans into his hands and never let go. You know, for years I heard amazing stories and saw beautiful pictures of the Holy Land, from the Sea of Galilee, the Mount of Olives, the city of David, uh, and, 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 and the old city of Jerusalem. I've seen Bethlehem and, and the Garden Tomb. You see all these wonderful pictures that it almost doesn't even see, seem real whether we see it through photographs or, or paintings, movies, or TV programs, it almost seems unreal. But a number of years ago, I was invited to join our missionary to the region, Bob Cave, and a group of pastors and, and leaders for a ministry trip uh, to Israel. Listen, we sailed the, the Sea of Galilee, ate fresh fish together on, on the shore, we sh shared scriptures on the hill where, where Jesus taught the, the Beatitudes. We preached at a church in, in Bethlehem. All of these things that we were doing. We had communion outside of the, the, the garden tomb and walked through the, the old city. This is unbelievable. Knowing that at, at times we were literally walking in the steps of Jesus himself. The scriptures were coming alive around us. But even though I had seen pictures, watched videos, and read these scriptures many times about this part of the world, nothing, absolutely nothing compared to the moment of clarity that I had when experiencing it for myself firsthand. It was unbelievable because then my perspective changed. It all came in to focus. All the things I wondered about, now I could, I could touch it. I could walk through it. And you know what? For many people, they've heard us talk about our vision here at Calvary. We've sung about it. We've preached about it. We've taught it. And we've creatively told our story through digital media, on our socials, through our website, through the production of, of our short films that we've done, all to help people see it for themselves. But with so many new people joining our community of faith, there, there's still a need to, to have people uh, experience it for themselves. And nothing compares to that light bulb moment. The moment when someone moves from hearing us talk about the vision to stepping into the reality of it for themselves. Taking ownership of what God has called us to do corporately. When for the very first time they have their own kind of holy land uh, perspective change. When they truly see it for themselves and they see themselves in it. You see, when you get a glimpse of what God sees for our church and for your life, I believe that we are ruined for normal living. You and I were never created. We were never called for normal. Louis Giglio calls it moving from the, the mundane to the majestic. When you experience a taste of what could be in him, you will never live uh, a single day again the same way. It, it, you will wake up differently with an understanding of what God has called you to do. So sometimes we need to, I think, take the time to remind ourselves why we're here. To retell the story of, of who we're called to be as we lift up our eyes together to see the future of the church. So let me give you five reasons why vision matters. And we'll try to cover the first three today and, and finish the balance next week in episode two. The first one is that vision is key to progress. Without vision, you have no forward movement. You have no progress. It's the key to moving into the, the next chapter of your story, of our Calvary story. In Habakkuk chapter two, verse two, it says, write the vision and make it plain or make it clear on tablets that he may run who reads it. 
Now, that really means that vision is transferable, right? It can go from one person to another because it's made crystal clear. Something that can easily be passed on to others. If you don't understand it, you can't pass it on. But if it's clear, you can pass it along to other people. And communicating vision clearly to others is really all about telling our story so it can be told and retold again. And, and, and in doing that, we celebrate our, our wins. We celebrate the things that God has done amongst us. We celebrate our progress. But God has, still has more for us to do. Years ago, Pastor Susan had the brilliant idea for our office to 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 help celebrate our wins. And so she found this bell online and we installed it in our hallway so that every time we had a birthday or something great happened, man, we ring that bell and it's a loud bell. People come out of their office to see what's going on as we celebrate the good things that God has done. And, and, And today, we're still ringing that bell. We're still celebrating people We're still thanking God for the new families that are are joining us, students that are answering the call of God in their lives, those that are are coming to to a knowledge of who Christ is within them, those that are being baptized. But you know what? God's not finished with us yet. We're not going to settle for just ringing that bell once. Vision is key to progress. And progress leads to more opportunities to ring that bell, and we are going to. You need to ring the bell in your own life. You need to ring the bell and celebrate the things that God has done in your family, in your life, in your health, in the church that you're a part of. We need to be thankful, eternally thankful, for the things that God has done and continues to do. The second thing is that, that no vision leads to die vision. Die vision. Now, this is a serious truth, actually, and I don't want you to miss it. Another reason why vision matters. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. So simply put, if you don't want to waste away and cease from thriving in your life, you need to have a vision. I don't know about about you. Have you ever traveled and gone to a, a city or a town where there's no vision? You see people walking around aimlessly. It's kind of like the walking dead addicted, can, confused, and, and lost. The streets seem dirty, the, the businesses seem closed up, there's graffiti everywhere, and not the good kind. And yes, there is a good kind. You know, it just looks like the end of the world. There's higher crime rates, you feel unsafe. It looks like the land that time forgot. But if you go to a, a city with vision, you'll see people working together, thriving. You'll see clean streets filled with with life. You hear it in the air. You feel it all around you. There's art and music. There's new businesses. All of these things are happening around. There's new construction. There's young families coming and going. There's people in in the park. You feel hope in the air. But see, that's the difference that vision can make. And you know what? If you go to a church or even a mall where there's no vision, you can feel it. You can feel the the heaviness in the air. It's like the life and the hope and the laughter has completely left the building. It's a ghost town. But if you go to a church or a mall even that has a vision, there's life. There's, There's laughter. There's creativity. It's the kind of place that you're proud to invite your family and bring your friends to the kind of place that that you want them to experience with you, like our church here at Calvary. But you know what? If you have a home, a marriage, or a family with no vision, then then there's confusion oftentimes. There's contention. There's there's anger. The people aren't, aren't forgiving one another. They're not eating together. They're not going on vacation together. You feel all of this. But if you If you experience a a home, a marriage, or a family that's filled with vision, then there's peace in that home. Not perfection, but peace. There's there's peace and a willingness to lovingly work through whatever problems come up. And problems will inevitably come up. But in this environment, in this family, people are are talking. They're enjoying one another's company. It's, It's filled with life. So where there's no vision, there is die vision. There's, there's a place of, of people perishing. It's the, 
the vision that's the difference maker, especially when the vision is empowered by the Spirit. And we're going to do one more today, and then we'll finish the next week. And this one is vision accelerates our devotion. It affects how we press into God. Proverbs 29, 18, read from a different version than we read earlier, says this. It says, where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained. Now, that's very interesting. You see, the reason many people live an undisciplined life is because they lack vision. If you don't have vision, you live without, literally live without restraint. You'll waste time. You'll waste money on things that, that don't matter if you don't have a vision for your life. You'll end up squandering that time that God has given you. You see, God's people are God's plan for the world. But when we become distracted, we begin living at a lower level of devotion, which in turn affects God's plan for our lives. And when you live at a lower level of devotion to God, you begin to seek comfort and ease instead of mission and vision. But a vision uh, for, for God, a vision for his house, for the church, compels people to live devoted lives and to invest themselves in serving our community and making an impact on our city. You know, I have such high regard for those who deliberately move from being a spectator to a participant, those who pick up an oar and help us row the boat, moving things forward, moving vision forward. Those who became, uh, or become a part of a small group, a Calvary group, those who serve on a team, those who sacrifice and, and give to the vision offering, those who busy themselves with the plan of God, those who pray, those who lead, and those who give. I honor you. I thank God for what he's doing in your life and continues to do in your life and in our church. Because what that means is that we're devoting ourselves to something that's so much bigger than ourselves. We're committing ourselves and devoting ourselves to his vision, his vision for our families, for our lives, for our church, and even for our nation. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you today for vision within our lives. We pray that uh, each of us would recognize the need for clarity when it comes to what you have for us, for our marriages, our relationships, for our children, for our church and our businesses, for all that we involve ourselves in. Help us to keep that vision that you've given us clear in our lives, that we will continue moving forward in you and understanding the value uh, of, of vision, that it matters. It matters a great deal within our lives. We're thankful today that you have had a vision for us since the beginning of time. And Lord, you, you suffered and endured because of the joy that you saw, that you, you set before you that you saw each one of us and the things that you've called us to do. I pray for that same endurance in our lives as we look ahead to all that you've called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God's best to you all, Calvary. Have an amazing week. As a final act of worship, we want to give you the opportunity to worship with your tithes and offerings. This is a chance for all of us to honor God with what he has blessed us with. And if you'd like to partner with us, you can do so by following the information at the bottom of the screen. And giving is safe and easy. And as you give, recognize that the, your generosity goes towards not only furthering our ministry in our, in our building, our neighborhood, but also in our city, our nation, and around the world as we partner with various ministry partners. So before you go, I want to pray for you and your giving. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for every giver, for every gift that comes in. We pray you would take it, multiply it, and use it to further your kingdom, not only in, in our neighborhood and even our city, but, but around the world as we partner with various organizations. We pray that we would see the gospel proclaimed like never before. We love you so much in your name. Amen. Thank you for joining us, everyone, and we'll see you next time for Calvary Church Online.